Hey, John here with the Columbia River Orienteering Club in Portland, Oregon. Today we'll cover what to look for when buying a compass and also have an overview of my favorite model, the Sunto M3. When buying a compass, you have many options and it can get pretty confusing. Options in your local outdoor store can range from not much more than a cereal box toy all the way up to high-end mirrored compasses that can be $80 or more. Which one to get? If you're a professional user like a forester or a backcountry ranger, you're probably going to want a high-end mirrored compass that can take very accurate bearings. But keep in mind that a mirrored compass adds cost, weight, and has more moving parts that can break. In my opinion, most recreational users just need a simple, well-built base plate compass with adjustable declination and not too many whistles and bells. With that in mind, let's have a look at my favorite compass, the Sunto M3. Sunto, a company from Finland, has been making compasses for decades. The M3 model is simple, has all the features you need, and costs about $35. The Sunto M3 is called the base plate compass. It has a long, clear plastic base that you can see through. The side edges can be used as a straight edge if you want to draw lines on your map. It has a nice reed bearing here mark indicated by this small triangle. The base plate also has two direction of travel arrows here, which tells you that that end of the compass always needs to point toward your destination. Looking at the dial, we've got a ring of 360 degrees in two degree increments on the outer edge, along with the cardinal directions of north, east, south, and west. Inside the dial, we have a liquid filled center, which makes the needle settle faster and your bearings more accurate. This is the magnetic needle with the red end always pointing to magnetic north. This is the orienteering arrow, also known as the shed. The shed is aligned with the magnetic needle to take a bearing to an object or to follow a particular bearing. More on that in lesson two. Inside the dial are six parallel red lines. These are known as meridian lines and are helpful when you're measuring bearings from a map. More on that in lesson five. Now let's look at a few extra features. First, ergonomic design. You can see the Sunto is rounded on one end. This rounded end always goes in your hand when you're taking a bearing, and the square end always points toward your objective. With this design, you can pick up the compass with your eyes closed and always hold it correctly. Being that one of the most common beginner mistakes is holding the compass backwards, this is a very helpful feature. With a compass like this, that's rectangular all the way around, it's easy to make the mistake of holding the compass backwards with the direction of travel arrow pointing toward you rather than away from you. The Sunto M3 also has adjustable declination, which I consider a mandatory feature. With adjustable declination, you adjust the orienteering arrow to match your local declination and then measure all bearings to true north. To set your declination, turn your compass over and look for a tiny screw that's on the bottom of the base plate right here. This compass also comes with a small screwdriver that we use to turn the screw. We cover this procedure in detail in Lesson 10. On the end of the base plate, a handy feature not found on many compasses is a 1 to 24,000 scale map ruler. If your map is printed at 1 to 24,000, as this one is, the standard scale for topographic maps in the United States, you can measure distance in tenths of a mile just by putting this end of your compass directly on your map. For example, measuring from the corner of our map over to this point is exactly a half mile, one-tenth, two-tenths, three, four, five-tenths of a mile from this corner to this spot. On the two side edges of the base plate, we have a centimeter ruler and a one-inch ruler. In the center of the compass, we've got a small magnifying lens, which is very helpful for reading small map features. Here we've got a small circle and a triangle stencil that can be used to mark points on your map Personally, I don't use them very much. Finally, on the bottom of the compass, we have a couple of small rubber feet that are helpful for holding the compass onto the map more firmly when you're making measurements. Finally, the important parts of the compass are luminous, so you can use it in the dark if you need to. So that's it, an overview of the Sunto M3. It's a quality compass that hits the sweet spot between function and price, and it's a great choice for most any backcountry traveler.